Hi there folks, real quickly before we get off the rest of the video, I'm going to show you these custom wood presentation cases made by yours truly to display your black powder revolver. Each box comes complete with several compartments put in, several different accessories such as powder flasks, spare cylinders, captains, and whatever else you see fit to put in there. The interior of each box is felt lined to safely hold your revolver. I offer several different sizes of standard box which will fit your full length cap and ball revolver such as an 1850 Remington or 1851 Navy, a smaller box which will fit a Remington pocket revolver or a small pistol like that, a larger Colt Walker box which will fit a Colt Walker revolver, and an even larger box which will fit an 1851 Navy buttline special revolver or an 1858 Buffalo gun. To get one of your own you can find them for sale on my eBay store and I have that link down below in this video's description. Go check that out when you have the chance. Now, let's get on with the rest of the show. Hi there folks, you're watching the Black Powder Shooter 44 channel. Today I'm out here with a Remington revolving carbine. This one is made by Uberti. Uh, it has an 18 inch barrel, so a short carbine length rifle, 44 caliber, just like the Remington 1858 revolver, but instead this is a uh, revolver carbine. So, very cool gun and it's been a while since I put this gun in a video. I made a brief video on this a couple years ago. Actually, more than a couple years ago now. And uh, the problem that I was having with it, and the reason why I haven't put it in a review yet, is that this gun was shooting consistently low and uh, to the right. So I adjusted the elevation, got that right on, but uh, the windage... I could not get it. I could not get it on no matter what I did. I was trying to adjust the sights here. It, this is a semi buckhorn type sight. So that's easy to adjust for elevation. But for windage, I could not get the sights to move. I tried uh, this sight here and the front sight as well. And I could not, no matter what I did. Uh, I tried soaking this at tip of the barrel and PB blaster for about three or four days. And as you can see, it took the bluing right off the gun did not loosen up that uh, sight at all. So what I did eventually, that was that was the last straw. I had tried everything. So I ended up bringing it to a gunsmith and he set it up so that we got the elevator, or sorry, my, my bad. We got the windage on now. And uh, I told him the problem we were having and he was able to get that situated. So it's still shooting a little, uh, little low, but our windage is right on. So that's the main thing. So I'm happy with that. So now we're finally going to put it in a video. So let's get it loaded up. Okay, so we got the Remington revolving carbine up here at the table. Now these were actually made in 1866. So right after the Civil War. And they did not do well. The problem was the Henry Lever Action Rifle had already come out. So a couple years previous. So this technology, we're having a rifle, a repeating rifle in a cap and ball style was just an, a technology that was outdated at that point. So they did not do well. Not too many were produced. But uh, I'll tell you what, they are a lot of fun to shoot. So I got the cylinder. I already took it out before the video, this would be, so this will be easier to do. So it's just your standard 44 caliber Uberti cylinder. If you had a 58 Remington that was made by Uberti you could use a cylinder from it on this gun. So I'm going to be loading up with uh, 30 grains of powder. So I'll just do it out here on camera. And uh, that flask only throws about 22 grain charge. So level that off. Pour it in the chamber. And I'll put a 44 caliber felt wad on there. If you want to know how to make your own, want to learn how to make your own felt wads, really easy. Check out my video on the channel on how to do that. Push that wad down. Now we're going to project, get a projectile, and we're going to put it, uh, put over the cylinder and send it home. All right, so we're all set to get the cylinder loaded up. Now I always clamp my loader down, but I left my clamp up in the garage. So, oh well. We're going to be using a 457 round ball. And uh, I like this container that has the slots that you put your different projectiles in. That's what I do. Mark off which ones I got in there. 
It's pretty neat, but the thing is, I just found out these dividers slide right out. So, the projectiles have been mixing together a little bit, so... <laughs> I'm going to put some Loctite on the, on the bottom of that so it doesn't happen. But it's a nice idea. Anyway. We're putting these 457 round balls over the chambers. As you know, I always try to load my guns uh, off the frame. I find it's a little easier to do. So we're going to send this home. Hopefully I'm not blocking the camera too much, sorry. Okay, 457s give us a nice seal on the chamber there. So we shouldn't have any chain, fi chain fires. And we've got some number 10 percussion caps. Those will give us a good seal as well. So I'm going to put the caps on the nipples and then we're going to go fire the gun down range. All right, we're going to go fire the Remington carbine down range. And we're going to try it on that paper target down there at about 30 yards. So let's see what we can do. All right, let's go take a look. All right, so we're gonna take a look at the target here. So we were aiming at this bottom one and apparently my camera decided to turn off before I was done shooting during that uh, session there. But uh, sorry about that. But uh, here's our grouping. We got two shots on here that I don't like too much. But these over here aren't too bad. There's four shot grouping here. So 30 grains of power with a 451 round ball. All right, let's shoot some steel down there. It's the Remington revolving carbine. Okay, so that was not a good shooting session, but I did. It, <laughs> I was able to hit the target five out of six times. As you can see, all most of our hits are there on the right side of the target. So I'm holding a little bit, pretty much uh, on the top left corner of the target, and uh, that does the trick. You gotta understand, before this gun was shooting about 18 inches right at about 15, 20 yards, so it was pretty bad. So this is a big improvement. All right, six for six, I'll take it.
All right, one thing to note when you're shooting one of these carbines is the how you hold it when you shoot it. You don't want to hold it like your standard rifle out here kind of deal. You want because the cylinder in case you have a chain fire that ball would hit your wrist or just even the sparks coming out of there, all that you don't want you don't want that going in your wrist. It won't feel good. So, you want to hold the gun back here grip like this or like this or however you like to do it. You want to, you got you have to uh, hold it back by the trigger guard there. So, just a quick note. So, thought you let you thought I'd let you know that. And oh my gosh, it looks like our friend the golf ball is back. Avoided me last time. But I don't think he's going to get away this time. Let's see if we can take him out. We went flying. Well, it looks like it's a clean hit because the golf tee is still there. I'm curious to see what the golf ball did. Huh. Very interesting. I don't know if that was a, a graze or entry wound. It's kind of small. Interesting. All right, so that'll wrap up a review in a Remington revolving carbine by Uberti. A lot of fun to shoot. Um, that golf ball, the second golf ball I hit, I went and looked at it, and apparently I just grazed it because I could see where the bullet went over it, where the bullet grazed it, that is, right there. So <laughs> it wasn't a direct hit. Those, they're a lot harder to shoot than it looks like, the golf balls. <laughs> but uh, I'll have to work on that some more. Anyway, we had a good time shooting this gun today. Now, sometimes I'm asked by people, would I recommend this for hunting? And, you know, I don't know if I would. It's a lot of fun to shoot. I recommend it for at the range. You want to have a good time with one of these uh, historic firearms. But, uh, you know, I feel like there's too much room for error. If you're a little off, like this gun, I can't get it dialed in to, uh, you know, dial it in. I have to hold... I can't hold point of aim when I'm shooting at that long range, which is typically when you're hunting, you, the deer's not going to be right on top of you most of the time. But uh, that said, you know, I'm, I'm shooting at the steel target and I'm not aiming right in the middle of the target, I'm aiming a little uh, high and left, and you don't want to do that when you're hunting, you, you don't want to have to do that. So, you know, your gun, if you have one of these that shoots right on, then yeah, I would, you know, I would consider it. Um, I feel like it has enough stopping power, and with a conical bullet, maybe a Kaido Oyama conical bullet, something like that, you know, you're going to get some, uh, a lot of power out of this gun. And uh, we have yet to do some testing with this gun, penetration and velocity, with round ball and whatever, but uh, stay tuned for that, by the way, just a sneak preview. But uh, would I recommend it for hunting? Maybe not, it depends, it just depends on your gun, depends on the shooter. I like it just for shooting at the range myself. Anyway. A lot of fun to shoot. I would recommend into looking into one of these. They're pretty expensive these days from places like Dixie Gunworks, Midway USA, to right around five hundred dollars. But if you can find one cheaper, then yeah, I would. You know, if you, I would recommend it. If you have a Uberti Remington eight fifty eight, you know, you want something to go along with it. This is going to be good here because you can swap the cylinders in and out. And if anyone happens to have any. You know, 1858 Uberti cylinders are looking to get rid of them 40 for caliber and you want to sell off. I may be interested as well, so let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching, folks. Until next time, have a great day.